All right, the graphing test for my classes is going to be on uh, Monday, but for most of the other classes, uh, eight out of the ten pre-calc classes, it is tomorrow. So this was reviewed as meant to help you with your graphing test. Uh, I will be also doing more review tomorrow uh, on Friday for my kids because we're putting it off because I was sick and didn't warn anybody that there was a test coming. So we're moving it to Monday in servers class. All right. So now, here's the graphing stuff. If you had this, absolute value of x minus 2, and you had this, uh, x squared plus 3x minus 4, if I graph those, do you get that there's a u and a v shape? And if I just say equals, all I want is where they touch. Okay, so you graph both sides and see where they cross. Everybody, take out your graphing calculator and do that. And if they don't touch, that means there's no solution. If you need to borrow one of mine, just leave me a cell phone or a shoe and take one of my graphing calculators. I have more. There's more in the cupboard right here. Rapido, por favor. All right. So I'm putting this in absolute value of x minus 2 so that I can go to absolute value, which, by the way, is in catalog. ABS, there it is, absolute value of uh, x minus 2, x minus 2, and I hit enter, and the other side is x squared plus 3x minus 4. I could put that on the next, on y3 if I wanted, but I'm going to put it up here on y1. x squared plus 3x minus 4. And I graph, and I see if they cross. My window is really wacky, so I'm going to go to zoom 6, because that gets me to the normal window. See if I can see it better now. Oh, much better. Okay. And now, if all I wanted was where they were equal, I would just graph both sides and see where they cross. So I go second calculate intersect in order to figure that out. So make sure you can do that. Second calculate intersect which is number five and then I'm going to go enter enter and then the last one I arrow over and get it right close to where they touch and I hit enter and there we go 1.16 is approximately where they touch and then there's another spot where they touch so I'm going to go second calculate the intersect and then it's going to ask me first curve, second curve. Now this is important. Where it says guess, I got to go move over to where the other one is, where the other spot is where they touch. I don't want just the same answer over again. Now it's close enough, believe it or not, as long as it knows it's that one it's supposed to get drawn to. And there it is, negative 5.16. So it's positive 1.16 and negative 5.16. Those are my two answers. But what if I change the question? And what if instead I asked you, where is this greater than that? Well, then you have to ask yourself, where is the V-shape compared to the parabola? And what does this mean? In terms of the graphs, greater than would be like what? Above. So those of you that actually take notes, you should be saying this, above. This means above. That means below. All right. You might think, well, I'll remember that. Yeah, I already told you that before when we did this the first time. And if you didn't remember it just now, it's because you already forgot it from last time. So that's why we take notes, because you will remember it better. All right, so where's the V-shape above the parabola? I'm going to look back at my picture and see. The cool thing I can do from this is drag this off to here. There. And now where is the V-shape above the parabola? Well, I'm going to go, where's the V-shape? V-shape is here above the parabola. Question? Okay. So let's look at this spot like right here. Would you agree that the V-shape is below the parabola right now? Okay. How about this? Is this spot right here, is that a spot where the V-shape 
is above the parabola. Remember, you got to like go with whatever is comparable, like right there on the parabola. See? Yeah. So it's in here where the V shape is above the parabola. All the rest of the time, the parabola is above the V shape. See, look. If I pick a spot like there and I go down here, see how the, the parabola is way above the V shape? All right. So it looks like it's between those two points. So here's a point. Here's a point. I already figured out they were negative 5.16 and positive 1.16. So then if I draw myself a number line and I know it's between those two points, here's 1.16. Here's negative 5.16. Do these spots actually work or not? I know it works between them, but how about those spots? Well, you got to look at the sign. It says or equal to. See that? Greater than or equal to. If it says or equal to, then it'll work. And there we go. And you would actually finish your problem by saying this. Negative 5.16 to 1.16. Okay? Now I have one more tip for you that makes this just a little bit easier. All right. I, it's one of these things where do you have to? Nope. You have to have your answer like this. You don't have to have this part, but it's sort of like saying... Let's say that you were a little kid asking about, do I really have to line up these numbers? Well, no, you can do it in your head, and you don't really have to line them up, but is it a good idea to line them up? Yes. It's really a good idea to do this because you're less likely to screw it up. Just like it's a good idea to line these numbers up, even though technically you don't have to to get the problem right. Okay. I'm going to uh, move on to another major kind of problem. Uh, actually, let's just do one more like that last one. What if you had this? Do you get how some people would like to start by subtracting 5 and then dividing by 2? But that introduces the chance that you make a dumb mistake. Instead, just graph it right off the bat, exactly the way you see it. There's no reason to solve this first. Just put this in as y1, put this in as y2. Go ahead, type those into your calculator right now. And I'm going to show you an extra little tip that might make your life a little bit better. I'm going to pause while you're doing it. All right, so we're going to put in some data to try a linear regression problem here. It's under stat. And then say edit. And then 2010, 11, and 12, I'm going to put in 0 0.5, 2.5, 3.5, and 6.5. And now, I'm going to ask my calculator, if this was going to be a straight line, linear regression, what should it be? And so I go stat, calculate, linreg, and this is where I even messed up last hour because I hadn't done one for so long. I just hit enter right here. And it tells me the equation but I got to do the L1, L2, Y1 thing. Otherwise, it won't work right. So I go second L1, comma, L2, comma, Y1. It's under bars. I bars. Function Y1. Hit enter. And if all they asked you, who? Oh, okay. Something's wrong. I'm going to see. One of the tricks I want to tell you is that if you ever have a mistake, like say go to, and it'll tell you where it was a problem. Oh, it's blinking on the Y. There must have been something wrong with the Y. I had something in the Y. I already had an equation there, see? And it can't put it there if there's already an equation there. I wish it was smart enough to just wipe it out. But see how go to told me what was wrong? I'm going to clear that, and now I should be able to go back out and now just hit enter, and now it'll work, see? So if it ever breaks on you, like doesn't work, do the go to, and it gives you a hint. All right. So now I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to write it down, because it is probably on the, uh, in the question we ask about this, uh, we always ask for the equation. So y equals 3x minus 6029.8.
There we go. That's an equation of regression. And if I wanted to, I could put in any X or Y number I want. So what if they say later, when will your dad hit $10 million of sales? You would put in a 10 for the X? No, X is time. If they're asking you for 10 million in sales, that would be like this being a 10, which is like the Y being 10. You'd put a 10 right there and solve it for X. You'd add 6029.8 and then divide by three. Get the idea? And if instead they ask you, you'll have to do algebra to get this alone now. Solve for X. Add 6029, divide by three. Okay. If I want to get the X number, if they say instead, what will your dad make in the year 2015? You put 2015 in for X right there. Y equals 3 times 2015 minus 6029.8. And it predicts what he would be making in the year 2015. All right. One more hint on how to do those. If you want, you can go like this. Store the year 2015. Store it under X. So, store it under X. And now I just told the calculator to use X is 2015, and I want to know what Y is. So now I got to type in Y. Y1 stat. Cal oh, wait a minute. No, I don't have to do all that. Sorry. I just want to hit Y1. Bars. Right. Y bars. Enter, enter. And then now I want to know what Y1 is. Hit enter. There we go. Apparently, in the year 2015, he'll make $15.1 million. Unless he isn't arrested by then. Or killed by the drug cartel. Okay. Any other questions about how to do those linear regression ones? Okay. We're running out of time. This is why I felt like I should not try to go on today because I haven't covered near all the stuff that you have to know. Uh, we've covered it all before. This is review. But I want to make sure I review thoroughly for you since I was absent and not able to help you as much. So tomorrow we'll have a review day. Your homework for tonight is odd questions. I think there's like seven of them. And uh, I'm going to hand out that worksheet right now. It is right here.